All righty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another day of the Overwatch League. The last day here of APAC action. I am Achilles, joined as always by Avril. And boy, what a matchup here to start the day. And then what a future matchup potentially coming yeah. upon us here, Avril. Uh, starting things off here for the APAC play-in. We are going to have the Philadelphia Fusion going up against the Hangzhou Spark. The winner of this matchup gets ready to go up against the Seoul Dynasty later on today. You don't get that much of a break. You have to be able to play back-to-back -back series if you want to go to the playoffs. It's the final day of APAC here. It's the final broadcast until we send one team into the playoffs. And then for two others, it'll be the end of the line here in Achilles. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Like you said, man, we've got some good ones. We've got three of the remaining teams. Obviously, we've said goodbye to all the eliminated teams here in the Eastern Division side of things. New York, Huangzhou, San Jose, Valiant, they're all gone now. So it's up to I can't believe the Valiant. Philadelphia, it, and Seoul Dynasty. It breaks my heart. It truly does. If only the Valiant were here today. But we do have, first of all, Spark taking on Fusion. The winner of that will play up against Seoul Dynasty, who are waiting in that uh, match number two. And then, obviously, the winner of that goes directly to playoffs, and that is going to be it. Yeah, I mean, it's tight net co you know, competition here today for the side of the Dynasty. They're fortunate enough to, to be able to kind of sit back and watch what these teams are doing, learn what, uh, you know, whichever team is going to be winning this first series, learn what they're doing to, to try to, you know, find victory and then try to play around that when they get to their set. They get to try and relax a little bit, but something tells me that there's not going to be too much relaxation going on inside the, uh, the Dynasty household right now. I think that it's right. going to be very, very tense as they sit there and watch. You know, I, w I would expect that they're probably hoping that somehow the Hangzhou Spark comes out and wins this. Um, just kind of historically have been a bit of a weaker team. But uh, at the same time, if the Hangzhou Spark win this, then they are on something today. And then you have to be very, very scared of them. So either way you slice it, it's going to be a tough opponent for the side of the Seoul Dynasty. But let's go ahead and get right into our starting rosters, see what is being brought to the table. First and foremost, we'll be taking a look at the Hangzhou Spark. And it's not going to be any surprises whatsoever. It's going to be the Architect Shy DPS lineup. It certainly is, and I think Shy is back in action. He's activated now. You're wondering, I mean, where has Shy been? He's not disappeared, Avril. No, he hasn't, but his hero pool was kind of gutted in the last, yeah. you know, tournament cycle there in the Countdown Cup. Most of his good stuff was banned. No Echo, no Ash. I think Ash particularly has been Shy's. That's his creme de la creme right there. That is his signature hero, and still to this date, he still holds some of the highest statistics specifically on this Ash. We're talking about number one final blows per 10. Number one scope critical kills. Number one in least amount of deaths as well. So this guy's a monster. And I, I think this, if there's any meta for the Spark to make a comeback, it's via Shy, via the Ash. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, even even without that, he was still, you know, able to pop off with it, you know, the likes of his McCree and whatnot. So it's he was uh, a little bit weakened, but still uh, coming back in now should be feeling fully comfortable being able to go back over to the Ash. I mean, maybe the Spark yeah. have something else prepared for us. Maybe they're going to unveil something a bit different for this series. I mean, it's the end of the line. You have to pull out all stops to try to make it to the playoffs. So, we, you know, who really knows? On the other side, though, we'll take a closer look at the starting lineup for the side of the Philadelphia Fusion and see what they've got. Because this has been a team that is very much willing to play around with their roster, with their starting lineup, and we're seeing a change here. It's going to be Carpe and Shockwave to kick off this series. It is. Shockwave to date has only played one map this entire season. You know what that one map well, was? He gets two. Temple of Anubis versus the Hangzhou Spark. He, his opening frag of the entire season, you know who that was on? Shockwave played Widowmaker and he killed Shy in his opening Strong. frag of the Overwatch League season for 2021. And now he's back. You know what? Hangzhou Spark playing against you, won a map against you. We're back for round two. We're back for a little bit more. I expect a lot more Shockwave to be played today. Carpe obviously still in. He's there, you know, pretty much he's their captain. He's the face of the team. He's been the guy on the fusion for the longest time here. Shockwave's barely had an opportunity to kind of prove himself. And I would like to believe that in between Countdown Cup and them failing to make the play, failing to make the tournament, and now in terms of the practice and experimentation of the roster, perhaps they've landed on Shockwave being, okay, well, maybe this is the DPS play that we really need. Well, they have made the decision. We'll see if it comes back to bite them in the rear or if Shockwave can absolutely make an impact here in this, at least this first map. Who knows? Like you said, you, you're expecting to see a lot more of him. I think that we might see a bit of flexibility here and maybe we see EQO come back in after this, depending on what the map selection is going to be. But time will tell. We have to just kind of wait and see. 
because we will be taking a look at our map set here in just a moment and see where we are going to be kicking things off on. It's going to be Oasis on control to begin. Loser will then pick every other map in this first to three series. We'll see who is going to be able to come out on top, starting things with a win on control. Always a major boon gives you that leg up. Fusion would love to have it. So notice, by the way, that obviously on the Hungdra Spark side of things, it's Mika and Coldest again. MCD's been removed from the roster. IDK was yes. his partner in crime in terms of the back line, in terms of, you know, playing the the the, uh, the duo in the support line. And Hungdra Spark, for I think the last two matches have already been in the Countdown Cup, they've been opting to play their Chinese back line for the supports of Mika and Coldest. And so here we go now. Shy over towards Trace to start things out. We talked about the Ash, and it's going to be Shockwave starting on that here. Yep, Shockwave on that, Shy on the Tracer. Architect with the Sombra. First volley, a little bit of a scouting mission now, gonna rotate around the back, look for a bit of a flank angle, try to get on top of Alarm in all likelihood, or just get a nice hack on a mono, make him a bit of a sitting duck. But now it's just poking and prodding from either side. Rotate around the side of the map here. You should try to get on a decent little flank as Hoppa goes diving in, gets in on top of Gushui. This corridor bound onto Bernard now, gonna be flipping over to Shy. They can track his position just a little bit better for now. His mono comes mono. rolling in, but he gets hacked. The rockets from Bernard will take him down. So match now out on a funny Astro. Fusion not really in a position where they can safely pull out of here. You know, will just, you know, likelihood get picked off. Need to just try to, you know, jump in front of traffic realistically at this point. Get a fast reset. It's 15% currently on the board. But the side of the spark as they win the first fight. Into traffic or off the map there. Bernard still gets the kill credits. So that's going to be a lot of ult charge. I mean, Bernard actually already has the self destruct. So tons being done in that last fight there. You see Mardo getting caught out on towards the point. Spark were very uncommitted to actually taking a fight with the fusion. They wanted to go for the actual objective first. Mardo, I guess tried to contest that one and ends up being that first casualty that has his tire snowball effect giving spark that first fight win so no other real ultimate to speak of just yet nano is what i'm looking towards our coldest nano the kushrek should be the play falling low shine getting top back up straight back into the fight for him pulse bomb at the ready just waiting for a target self destruct going to be greeting them and shockwave's going to get picked off not enough shield to try to hide behind the pulse bomb's going to be good finds to stick onto alarm and he is still going to be 18 percent away from that transcendence so obviously cannot keep himself alive carpe going to get picked off here on the back end and it's only gushui fallen on the side of the hangzhou spark so very nicely one fight he'll be able to rejoin very quickly and with 65 percent on the board the fusion need to do something they need to do it fast emp's about there for architect as well now so that's going to be great timing. Nano was saved for the last fight. Arguably, it could have been used on Gusha. They could have had more kills. So you have this kind of peace treaty being drawn up when two players of the fusion went down. Only Gusha went down for the spark there. Early rally coming through as well. They know the EMP's coming. Yep. Let's pop that. Get the armor. Moving out across the members of the side of the fusion. Rally now going to be matched by Mika. Gusha falling low. Nano will come in to keep him alive. And that's going to be enough to push him up to that primal rage. Now has that ready. Push into the corner. The EMP comes in. Alarm does get the transcendence off. Two members going to be hacked. Anti-Nade goes out on the hot, but however, he does have to self-destruct to try to get back into the back. But 99% now taken away. Shockwave clearing the back flank, making sure that Shy is not there. Is that pulse bomb? It's about to be online. He now has it. Carpe, his own pulse, will find Coldest. They crash through Pernar. They find the kill. Pulse bomb stick will get rid of Funny Astro. Gushway falling. It seems the fusion should be able to win this out. As the flip starts to come through, they will be able to wrest control away from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. But the question is for how long? Everybody come we'll have to wait and see now. Mm -hmm. They can take a very much needed sigh of relief. Very late pulse bomb from Shy there as well. Not too sure that was about. Maybe thought he could do risk it with a miracle pulse. Maybe get a double kill there. He did see Alarm and Funny Astro dropping. So perhaps the opportunity was there. But speaking of late ultimates, the EMP from Arctic as well was quite late into play when, you know, the fight had already started going towards Fusion's way, the Prime had been popped a little bit earlier then, they want to start with EMP, not end with it ideally for the Spark, and with Alarm Frank and Colt, this already a 6v5. Yeah, a nice little pick up, it's going to be made a 5v5 very quickly after, Carpe, let's get eliminated. A little turn fire there from Mika, Mono, playing up over the top, telling he wants to go into this pile driver, sees Architect use the hack, now will drop in, gets the knock up, nearly has the minefield ready to go. Mika gonna get picked off. Shockwave finding that kill. Continuously playing this high ground. Oh, they are. Very critically low here. So I mean, that could be troublesome. If anybody goes down here, that gives agency for Spark to go in with the player advantage. They have ultimates now waiting for EMP. This time, Alarm is still just a few percentage points away from that transcendence. Might be able to get in time. Right. Really great collapse. 
They force the recall. They manage to get in on top of him. So, so full really reset. Pick off. Yep, yeah, exactly. that's going to full they spot have to go all the way back. Ooh, Carpe actually goes in. He uses the Pulse Bomb. I thought he was going to hold on to this until the rally was available, but actually throws it out early. Now Mika does have it. It's five ultimates for the side of the Hangzhou Spark as they get ready to go on this attack. They still need to defend against CMP. They have expended ultimates. I mean, we got Pulse gone. Minefield is gone right now. They would love these ultimates for this now fight, but I guess the plus side for Fusion is they're on the final fight. Now, EMP should come through. Oh, Alarmy does not manage to get the transcendence off. The rally is not going to be enough. It's far too late to try to keep them alive. Three members instantly evaporated on the side of the Philly Fusion as they get ready to force out OT themselves. But the flip is coming in, and crucially, they need somebody who's going to be able to touch this point. But I don't know if they realistically have anybody that can, at least not with any longevity. Hoppa goes in, gets himself up over the top. He does have the self-destruct, and he is going to pop it to dive in. They deny the remake by killing off the baby diva. The self-destruct not going to be able to find anything. Alarm. Still nearby, the Transcendent's now gonna have to be burned as Shockwave falls low. The bomb is gonna be used out onto the point. Mono now, hacked, can't roll around, can't cause any chaos, so will not fall. Bionate gonna be used to try to keep the this teammates alive. Sleep Dark disconnect, Bernard gonna be picked off. Nice kill there from the side of Carpe. Now Kushway going to fall. The front line has been broken down. They'll respond in kind by finding Mono. Now Shockwave going to be eliminated. It's all on Carpe. He throws out the Pulse Bomb, but it's not going to find a stick. It's not going to find an elimination. Tech falling low. Stays alive for a little bit longer. The dash run. Side of Fusion. They get the flip. And no one can test the point because it's just a little bit too late. And Fusion, they actually managed to take this one away. Dude, that flip came instantly and the wick burns down. Oh Within half God. a second, it, you, there was no no chance to react to that. You simply could not get off the point. Because when that flip comes on through, it's it's finished. And it started to turn very quickly. We saw the EMP. Beautiful start coming through from Architect. Catches Alarm. And they already had pressure placed onto Alarm beforehand. Oh, Gets really? melted down. No chance to use that transcend. But then they come back with the trance. And yeah, okay, that's going to trade like two players. Two plays here as well. Take a look at the final moments here. And it's just... Yeah. Mika's barely off. You know, just that outer one rim. chance to get on. Yeah. I mean, I got honestly, I will give him props for reacting fast enough to actually move yeah. in for it. Because if, if this was me or if this was, you know, I, I would say even above your average player, they might not have realized that this was happening. So it was a good reaction, but unfortunately, it should have been relying on Architect to be the one playing forward. It needed to be Mika playing on that corner. Yeah, well, I mean, Spark just go. failed to get enough kills. They just failed to get enough kills in the last fight after EMP, and that's going to cost them now. This round number one goes the way of the Fusion. I'm sure Fusion are fantastically happy about that. They really spent a lot of ultimates just to be in position for a big bone and into a lot of kills. Oh, yeah. It is just going to be a ball death. Just enveloping here in front of the side of the Fusion. Instantly, Shockwave and Alarm go down. Hotpa barely holding on to his mech. And now with no healers alive, just needs to pull all the way back up the spawn. I mean, he can offer up a significant amount of ult charge here for his supports once they respawn. The Alarm just steadily ticking away as they try to top him back up, but the first fight, and yet again, the first lockdown of the point will go the way of the Spark. So we're getting neutral oh. so far from the Spark. Now Shocko goes over to McCree as well, so a bit of a change hey. up here, going for a little bit more defensive pressure when Gushway actually dives on in. Again, look at Cold, this is the person that's going to make the biggest difference in that next fight. Not a lot of ult charge for this Ana, despite the big Byronic, just, I guess, didn't have a lot of damage coming on through, and Spark weren't taking much damage after getting the kills. Trey in early, Cold is still building, nearly there. Yeah, funny Astro just gonna get sent off the side of the map for Narb. Getting into a nice position, just sends him sailing into the deep. Still gonna have to wait. Reset yet again here on the side of the fusion. 40% bought already for the side of the spark. And it's hard for fusion to make a contest here because it's gotta be Carpe moving in first, or I suppose Mano makes a play. As soon as Mano and Carpe want to make a play, want to dive in, and that's going to be Byron and Alarm as well. There's that Nano now, just going to a small room. Yep, an Alarm will fall. Just a quick little hop over the side. Looking for Funny Astro, but Gushway has actually overstayed his welcome. Shockwave burns him down. So a one for one exchange. Tank for support. Pulse Bomb not going to find a stick, not going to find an elimination. And Shy in a rough spot. Oh, barely. Cannot make it over to that mini pack to get top back up. Carpe pursues forward. Hounds him down, gets that final, final melee hit to finish him off. Rally for Rally now going to be rolling. Funny Astro using his in response. That eye goes out, looking to just zone them off the point. And they'll just wait this out. Final shot goes in, but the Matrix eats that up. Fusion now are going to be on the board, and it's before the spark can hit 99%. A nice kill, the self-destruct actually going to be committed. So it seems like the Hangzhou Spark, they want to press the issue. They want to go straight back Absolutely. into this fight because the EMP is ready. Yep, the EMP needs to catch a lot here as well. Alarm has another transcendence, and obviously, okay, Alarm's done a lot of damage here. Arctic's on the hunt. Ideally, would love to catch Alarm. So they have the scouting done. Fusion 
Still, they're moving in. <gasps> oh, the shield bash comes in, but it's a little bit too early. Transcend is still going to be off, though. Alarm was around the corner. Looks to just keep everybody topped up. Shockwave taking a considerable amount of damage. Like, same exact spot, actually. So, it's not going to be used by Hoppa this time. Gets back into the mech. We're not going to manage to find Alarm. As Bunny Astro was taken down moments before. No supports, no McCree, and now no Tracer. Flip is inevitable here for the side of Spark. Only 45% or so. Bought right now for the side of the Fusion. It's kind of a weird fights coming through from both teams. I mean, I understand yeah. what Fusion are trying to do there. Okay, they're taking the tempo away from the Spark. They're robbing the Spark of the tempo because they probably know that the EMP is on its way. So they're going to force a fight against the Spark in territory close to the Spark spawn point. They, I mean, they're not ready for that one. Arctic gets bashed again. You said too early. I agree. The EMP comes on through. Not the best, but Cheyenne Coast still managed to get the kills anyway. The damage is done. Final fight territory now with Mano hacked out. No supports to speak of other than this minefield for the side of the Fusion, Jeez, but Shai is just going to get That is a major pickup there for the side of the Fusion Alarm. Is that going to be enough, though, to get them back in? They just need to get control. And then they still need to hold this all the way up to 100 if they want to close out the map. Spark very hungry to try to win this out right now, but they lose that front line. Carpe breaks down both of them. Alarm finds another pick on the back end. Fusion, they get a second lease on life. Absolutely. And now this is going very much their way. They have a lot more that's coming online as well. Funny Astro looking over towards the rally. Mika around the same percentage mark as well. And just to clear up what I said earlier as well, when I say Funny Astro bashing too early in terms of being able to stop the EMP, but obviously if you're a brig, as soon as you see the Sombra, you have to bash straight away. So back over towards this now as Architect goes up against, has the next EMP nearly available. That would be Funny Astro's job once more as. Alarm is also steadily getting this transcendence ready. So there's a lot of ultimates on life infusion. This is going to be a great last fight here, and it will be no, double 99 for both sides. So Carpe hacked instantly. Architect finds that kill. Nearly has the EMP ready to go. Rally armor rolling. Getting dished out here from both of these brigs. Nano boost going to be invested. Gooshway goes in deep. Sleep start connected. Shield bash will kill. Mono is eliminated. Now Funny Astro out of the fight. The transcendence in desperation. He missed. Used by Alarm. Yeah, the EMP does not connect. Alarm just trying steadily to keep everybody else topped up. Cannot keep Shockwave in the fight. Carpe's Pulse will find Coldest Hot, but not going to be hacked. It's Funny Astro swaps back over onto his namesake, Lucio, just to try to rejoin the fight a little bit faster. Alarm barely stays alive for the moment. Gooshway now going to get picked off. Fusion still 15% shy, so even if they flip this back into their favor, they still have to win out yet another fight. Prefer that rather than just go into a third and final round. Alarm looking for yet another target. Would love to take out Shy again. This is narrowly missing, but Fusion, they will go ahead, get this flip back into their favor. But can they win out the round? No alarm for either side other than this minefield from Mono. And it might be enough as well. This minefield can absolutely be deadly. Carpe will get a Shockwave whole spawn. Gooshway kills Shockwave. And that's a hack Carpe. of the hopper as well. Dangerously low. The minefield now going to come out. We're in the double overtime. Bolt's on the way. Architect 30% away from the EMP. Can absolutely build that up in the fight. The flip it for them in the meantime is nearly coming through. Hoppa's going to be the mech. Funny Astro is going to be eliminated. The pulse bomb was Nearly eaten. trapped. Carpe is gone. Three members now down. Transcendence Snip. is up from alarm. But the hell? Oh, the sleep card comes in. Coldest snipes him down. Follows up for a second final blow. As Mono will go down and Shockwave gets eliminated on the back end. That Transcendence will never get used, unfortunately, for the side of the Fusion. And we are going to a third and final round of Oasis to decide who is winning this first map. I mean, this has been dynamite so far. Both teams are playing at the absolute, max absolute maximum. What a play from Coldest towards the end. There are a lot of questions in the lineup when, okay, MC needs departed from the roster. He's gone. Obviously, he's been playing for most of the season. And every time that we've looked at Spark, and I think most people agree, when you look at the Spark in terms of individual player value, MCD brought a lot of uh, a lot of value to the team. Was a great player individually, mechanically speaking. So with him gone, is Cole is going to be able to step up? I think of the last two games, the Countdown Cup and Spark, really kind of suffering there. It didn't look like it, but here right now, in this break the Spark have had, it's looking great. Cole has had some incredibly clutch plays. That one sleep went to Alarm, ruining the Transcendence removes any hope for Fusion to come back into that fight. And maybe the hope for Fusion was pretty low in the first place, but All let's right. see how this Brawl Mirror goes now, because Spark have not played a lot of Brawl this year. Yep, Ryan Sigma. Just, the maze and Sims abound. Let's see what happens. Ooh, it's going to be a wholesale drop down into the pit. Yeah, the Senate of Sail and everybody going to be disengaging there on the side of the Fusion, whether they like it or not. Wall comes up. Carpe cannot escape. Hoppa rejoins the fight. Accretions, that's oddly symmetrical. Uh, both Sigmas finding accretion kills onto the enemy Symmetris. But there you go. And funny Astro just trying to stay alive, ride the walls as best as he can, but will get cut down in the end. 
The first fight, again, is going to go the way of the, of the spark. Fusion, do they stick through with this? I think they kind of have to. Oh, uh, Funny Usher's back now, so they need the full lineup. Alarm and Funny Usher both died, and notably Alarm still has an ultimate just barely before Coldus. I believe you have to credit Mika for that boop as well. Three players went into the hole. Two to three players. I couldn't see exactly how many, but a lot. It's a good wall and a good sniper oh. architect. Yeah, Carpet is instantly dead. Now Alarm gone, so that wall is not going to be able to be utilized by anybody. Mono is trying to escape. The shield's so low, they push it in on top of him. And Shy is just filling the kill feed as he often does. It's hot, but now in a very precarious spot. I mean, that is not going to do you anything. The Kinetic Grasp does not help against the Symmetra, but fortunately, he is able to disengage. Yeah, I mean, the help with uh, Carpe's Ice Wall there, then his own shield, and eventually get out alive. And this has been Fusion's problem so far on Oasis. Is as you mentioned, it's been three out of three neutrals, and they are at a heavy deficit. I mean, I'm not foreseeing a big cap to come on through just yet, especially when Arctic has this big advantage over towards the Blizzard. Hopper would have to be a god to eat this. Eyes on him for sure, and Mano as well with the shadow that Gushre does not have. Poking and prodding, but time is not on the side right now for the fusion. They need to commit, and they need to do it soon. Just trying to get a read on where everybody is at. Hunt Barrier comes in, Fluxes go out, Mono drops the hammer, but he is going to be the one spending time on the floor. Funny Astro picked off before he could use the Sound Barrier, and that is just going to be a team kill. 77% on the board right now, they need to rush back to this point. See if they change anything in the composition. They try to get themselves there a little bit faster, a little bit safer. It seems like just going to be sticking through with yep. it, but now they need to win out this fight. TPM probably. Funny Usher stunned. I think he got hit by the long range of Grecian. Again, that just slows down Yulusi a little bit. They're probably going to have to sound barrier in, and that is the key thing here because they didn't have the sound barrier last fight. Funny Usher died. Mika used it. That's part of the reason they won. So here we go straight away. TP around the side. Yep, they get themselves in onto the point. Sound barrier escorting them forward. Drop down. Gushway stays alive. Gets himself into the pit. Bernard, however, not going to be allowed to do the same. Will fall. The flip should be coming in now for the side of the fusion. Unless there could be a miracle turnaround. Gushway is going to be charging his way back over towards this fight. Oh, Shot is trying to duck and dive around. Gushway is here. He does have the shatter available. He's starting to kite back. Flip now is going to be allowed to happen. Fusion will regain control, or gain control rather, for the first time in this round as Alarm kills two on the back end. Bend but not break there for the Philadelphia Fusion. I mean, plenty of members. I think their entire team on 50% HP or even lower there, but Alarm just keeping them up. Getting the last two kills there as well. And despite Dude, most of Fusion kind of, you know, got locked out by Architects Wall, they still managed to get over, find a fight. Huge boop, I'm sure, from Funny Astro getting Gushray into the hole as well, making sure that wasn't going to be both a Rhine or a Shadow. And that could have been a Turner. Gushray still does have that Shadow advantage. And it's Architects' turn again to go for this Blizzard. Well, wall's coming up, they're looking to isolate. Uh, pulls over to the side, beams going through, will find Gushray. Shockwave presses forward, finishes him off, follows in for Mika. Shy committed. Oh, Barrier still committed to the fight, as is the Blizzard. They're looking to turn this one around. Shadow's going to be dropped in, manages to knock both DPS down to the floor. Mono now going to be frozen, but he is safe. He steps back up. Hotpa's right there alongside him. Kills off Shy, kills off Architect, and I don't know what the Spark were thinking. No, that does not look like a good play to me. That seems like Spark were Oi. a little bit confused on whether they should stay or you know leave, but they were already committed in terms of positioning. They looked like they didn't want to back count, but playing without Goose Ray, uh, playing without your main tech, with your Ryan here, it's just not going to be effective. We haven't seen the Shadow yet from Goose Ray. It needs to happen. But now, without the help of either the Blizzard or the Photon Barry, and yeah, I mean, they're lacking it a lot now. There will be a Flux coming in the next fight. This time, Funny Astro has to have the Sound Barry avail available, ready to go, and to use it. Alarm now. Window online, try to match Coldest. One going to be used up on the high ground. Carpe, ooh, pushed up. Into the air, Sound Barrier comes in, Flux is out. Bernard dropping a few to the ground. Mono gonna be falling low. Shadow's gonna be used, but the pin cannot follow up. They're looking to get in on top of Alarm to keep himself alive a little bit longer with that immortality field, but they finish it off. And instantly there's three kills here for the side of the spark. They only lose out on Coldest. Hotbow with a sliver of HP is trying to kite back. Funny Astro jumping over to his side to try to keep him in this fight, but Mika pursues just a little bit deeper. Gets that elimination. The flip has come in. We're into overtime now. Carpe, he has exhausted all of his utility to try to keep this going. Swap over onto the Wrecking Ball now for Mono to try to keep things going here. Trying to buy some time on the point. Shockwave, though, goes in with the uppercut, does not connect, does not get that shielding, and he will fall. It's just Listen, we'll end this now. Like a, yeah, 
Carpe now going to be eliminated. Architect gets that blizzard down on the initial choke. Looks for the freeze here onto the wrecking ball. The pin not going to connect. He tries to drop down into the pit to get that mega pack. He cannot make it happen. The photon barrier comes out in celebration. And the Hangzhou Spark will be able to take the first map. I mean, some wild swings on this first map here, Avril. So already tells us this is going to be an absolute banger of a series. But the Hangzhou Spark are the ones walking away two to one on Oasis at the end. It did feel like the Hangzhou Spark, especially in the early parts of all three of the sub-maps, had that initial lead right. They won all the neutrals, they had a lot of percentage points going their way. Yeah, there were some wonky fights in the building, some stuff that didn't go quite well for the Spark, some weird decisions. We looked at that 4v6 they tried to make happen with both Blizzard and uh, Photon Barry. It wasn't great. Some mistakes in the Fusion side as well, absolutely, definitely in their neutrals. And then even later on when they couldn't quite get some fights uh, in their favor and just good individual plays, I think that we've seen actually from quite a few of the members, especially the supports to start things out. Well, that brawl style definitely not suiting the side of the fusion. We'll see if they change it up. We'll see if this is going to be, you know, the same roster for either of these teams when we come back from the break and get ready to go into map number two. We'll also see what fusion's map selection is. So stay tuned, guys. Plenty more action coming your way. Like I said, if this first map is any indication, then we are in for an absolute roller coaster. Everything is on the line for these squads. They do not want their season to end here today. We'll see who can move forward, who can get that next map win when we come back. The Overwatch League is brought to you by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Marvel just Ooh. swinging away, gets three, and this is going to be a point day taken. Q on coming out, he's charging, he's looking, he's slicing, he's nice, and he's having another three! EQ owns to you, this keeps everybody safe. The shove off the point for now, Jester crashes through both supports, absolutely flattens him. Shy though finds alarm, the widow of Shy is unreal. Alrighty, we are back, and we're just one map into this series here, our first one of the day, and already things are explosive, they are wild. The Hangzhou Spark, though, they were able to control that chaos for just a little bit longer than the Fusion, they were able to take away the win on Oasis. Now it's going to be map pick for the side of the Philadelphia Fusion as we get ready to go into Assault. Absolutely, and uh, I think the surprising thing for me is the fact that Spark won the Brawl matchup. That is not something that Spark normally play. Yeah. Spark really, to me, have always been kind of more of a dive favorite team, as are most teams in the East Division in APEC, right? Especially playing around Shy. So to see them come through on a Brawl and for that to be the winning matchup is so strange to me. And now I'm a little bit concerned for Fusion, and they are going to be making a substitution as well. EQO yep. comes in for Shockwave. What does this mean as we go into, I believe, all Sky will be the next map? Maybe a bit of a spoiler. The the little thing up the, up the top oh, of the top. Oh, it's the about it to be on screen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got spoiled for like half a second there. Don't worry about it. As, uh, you know, what is the strat here? Is it more EQ or Sombra? I know there were some troubles in their last matchup for uh, Philadelphia Fusion going up against Soul Dynasty for the actual qualify into the Countdown Cup in the play in the uh, knockouts, right? And Iko Sombra wasn't wasn't that great. I mean, to be fair, yeah. Shy Sombra hasn't been great either, but Shy isn't playing Sombra right now. Architect's been picking that one up. So as we move over to Volskart, yeah, it is looking like Iko starting on the Sombra. Well, that he is. Carpe showing us the Torbjorn, I mean. It's it's possible, I suppose, but yeah, not gonna happen. Let's see him just swap over, moving it to the tracer. So we get the nice little top down. See the setup here. Split across from the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Mono rolls through. Get some vision as far as what they're utilizing. Translocator thrown down. They heard that one. They don't go in to try to destroy it though. So if you remember the last through. time uh, we saw Volskaya as well with Fusion, it was Hopper playing a lot of Zarya. Back when it was the Hopper carry meta in Countdown Cup, and now the Diva is going to yeah. be the players. They're going back over towards more of an open meta type of dive. It's actually Gushway in a weird situation right now. He's maybe just cutting off the rotation from Philadelphia Fusion, as the rotation will be difficult here. They actually need to make a dive happen if possible. All right, well, Shy going to find the opening kill. Alarm going to get his head taken off. Now just goes in onto the flank, puts a couple shots in. We'll finish off EQO, so first volley going to be staved off quite nicely. They don't give up anything here on the point. Mono is going all the way over they towards the, uh, the spark spawn. And yeah, I mean, they could just leave him to his own devices, wait till he comes back in, farm some more ults off of him, and just continue this cycle of him moving over towards the spark spawn. I mean, I've seen some funny stuff where a Wrecking Ball will try and reset in the defender spawn right in B, and then a another Wrecking Ball chases him. Obviously, Gushra is playing a Winston here, so it's not going to be the same. And now he is behind them. He's not been spotted. I mean, this is the problem. You have to mark Mano, otherwise he's going to set up an actual dive. Well, hasn't really managed that one yet. They just put a little bit of pressure over onto the point. Force them to change position. Recall going to be used. Carpe needs to try to get the heck out of there. Pulse Bomb going to be used. Now Architect matching, but 
neither explosion finding any kills. Ooh, good little dance around there by EQL. Manages to avoid that flashbang. And yeah, Bernard gonna be taken out. Huge pickoff. He's just 9% away from that graph. Now has that energy reset. And with these kills coming in, it seems like that should just be the lockdown coming through. On point A, Cold is going to fall. Gushway just left alone. Will die. I mean, a good amount of ultimates stacked up here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark to try to win out on defense and prevent a snowball. But Fusion as well, not too far off from being able to get this double cap, potentially. I mean, look at the EMP about to become online as well. Minkin needs yeah. this rally as soon as possible. I'm having some problems with Spark's decision-making when these taking things down. I saw a little bit on this Oasis as well, but they're pulling the trigger a little bit too early here. You see the Nano play coming through. Gushray tries to dive in, and the Fusion just back out. They you, Gushui can't go any further than that. He's caught now. He has to disengage. Your entire nano has been wasted. So Fusion are okay with that. All they spend is a rally. They've got plenty to work with now. Alarm has transformed Bernard's. Got put on Surge as well. So we'll see how this unfolds. Okay, Grab's going to be used. Looking for eyes on it. It's the Transcendence Force here for Alarm. EQO dead. EMP. Did he get killed out of it? I'm not even too sure. I didn't see it really Died, strike like, anybody. Away. But yeah, doesn't find anything. Gushway with the Primal Rage will get rid of both supports. And that is going to be a fairly nicely one fight here for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Getting rid of that Transcendence in the EMP in one fell swoop and giving up nothing on the point is an absolute win in their book. I mean, they don't even need the rally. That's the biggest thing, right? I mean, the EMP came on yeah. through. Rally didn't even need to be popped. I'm not exactly sure who EQ got in the EMP, but he did die straight away. Uh, I don't think he got cancelled, but I, I, I wasn't exactly sure who he got. In either case, didn't end up being enough there. Failed hack over towards Architect, and now we're also seeing Gushray finding a lot more value in the Primals. I thought that was something that was missing on Oasis. These Gushray Primal Blades that we're known for, that he's known for, weren't really there in the last map, and now it's back. Shy, just looking to keep EQ honest. Zones him off that right side flank. Architect dropping down, gets into their back line for just a moment. Oh, the Nano Boost gonna be used. As they look for that kill with the Pulse Pop. Drops down, Flashbang goes into Mono. Takes him to about half HP, forces him to roll over. Pick up that Mega Pack. Clears out the mines for now. This is okay, I mean, that was a that was a fun engagement. But the rest of the fusion, just pulled away. Sleep Dark greets Mono as he hits the high ground. It's woken up rather quickly though, and is able to roll out to safety for now. Self-destruct available. The Astro stunned up. Flashbang comes in. Architect finds the kill. Gets him out of the fight. Hopping out. He's the self-destruct. Tries to buy some space for himself to get back into this mech safely. He'll be able to do so. Car is just high energy building Fusion up for this trigger. next. Oh! He almost gets a kill on the Carpe. Carpe actually manages to get on top of that Mega Pack. Gets that elimination. Now the front line's going to be broken down. Bernard again going to be dying moments before he has a grab online. The first tick now comes in from the side of the Fusion. His Architect is going to fall as well. Cold is going to be picked up here on the back end. That might just be the cap coming in now. Jai dives in onto the point, but he just cannot last long enough. Nor can Gushue. And that should just be the cap. Two minutes and nine wow. seconds as they don't even need that next EMB. EQ will never be able to build it up. They'll celebrate with a rally as the cap comes in. Fusion, they complete Volskaya. Speaking of ultimates that didn't get played there as well, grab it on Surge, on Burner. He dies on, what, 94% respawns. There's not really a fight anymore. And it's just gonna be wasted in spawn pretty much there. It, another strange fight from, I think, both teams where you lose Funny Astro. It's a 5v5. And Philadelphia Fusion for a while, and I, I was about to step in and say, like, they gotta go. They're wasting a lot of time here. They're the team that can't afford to kind of dilly-dally, because while the respawns come back in, guess what? Spark get their respawns first. We're playing Assault here. We're playing 2CP here. We're playing the, the last 2CP you may ever see as we hit no watch 2 for next year. As Hangzhou Spark, they have a respawn advantage. They gotta get their 6 back, and for the Philadelphia Fusion, my biggest question mark was, how do you actually find these engages? Because outside of EMP, there isn't clear like win conditions, at least as far as ultimates go. So you have to make mechanical plays. You have to have alarm, finding these picks off with the right click, Mato diving in, Carpe maybe with the pulse bar, making a play there, which by the way, he pl put the pulse bomb in there, on towards Shy, who then got nano by Coldest and saved by the damage reduction. And that was a cool play from Spark Good to them. But Fusion, they eventually pulled the trigger slightly later than I would have preferred, but Funny Astro notably comes back and gets a rally and everyone in Fusion survived. Like, no one on their team died yeah. as both teams were in a bit of a stalemate. 
I just, I, I feel like I'm losing my mind at time to time because some of these fights, like you say, have been so weird. And I'm like, am I processing everything correctly? Or, like, yeah. <laughs> is this just what the reality is? And it's like, no, like, this is just what's happening. It's I'm been like, okay. multiple times that both teams kind of just shake hands and, you know, give the respect over and say, like, we're, we're down players, you're down players, we're not going to push into you, you're not yeah. going to push into us, and we're both going to have, we're going to have this Mexican standoff and just stare at each other for a little bit. Would you all like to, uh, just pull some shenanigan ring real quick. Yeah, yeah for sure. Parlay. All right. Good way. Oh, dives into the onto the high ground, finds alarm in the hallway. Great pick off there for the side of the spark. Let's see if the fusion. They try to stave them off. Need to get some kills pretty quickly if they want to dissuade them from making their way onto the point. And Bernard just trying to squeeze that corner, just trying to get line of sight there onto Hot, but just can't quite make it happen. Would have been a really nice DMAC. This is just buying time for alarm to float his way back over to the point. You can see he's still quite far off though. Oh, Mano slipped on the side as well. Yeah, That's okay. Well, that might just be point A. <laughs> I mean, you can't get... Now. How do you get past Shai, who's already on a data? How do you get past Burner, who now, at this point in time, is still probably sitting on quite a bit of energy? At best, be very you can force a Nano. Yes. If you can force Ultima, so that's good. But right now, they're kind of just feeding in. Uh, the Pulse Bomb is used as well by Carpe. Doesn't manage to find anything. Shai, that final kill. Fast respawns, gonna be there for the side of the fusion, so they can get set up fairly quickly, but they've got no what? ultimates to speak up. Like oh, oh no, okay, well that's gonna be, he's luckily, I think, within the window, so he does get the fast respawn, so he's straight back into the fight, but he's still no closer to this EMP, 15% yeah. away, and he needs this thing yesterday. Nano's coming in, look at this, Spark wakes no time, they're straight away in, because they know Alarm doesn't quite have a transcendence, and Funny Astro only just gets a rally. Does have it online, but he hasn't popped it yet. Now it's going to start rolling this one through. Sleep guards out of the mono, though. He's at half HP. Oh, the dead eye from Shy will finish him off. Carpe out of the fight. A first tick already going to get picked up. Pulse bomb from Architect, grab. thankfully, for the side of the fusion. is not going to be able to find anything to eat. Ikuo does have the EMP ready to go, but he's going to have to pop it pretty damn soon. Grab comes in. That's going to be locking alarm in place. The transcendence will keep him alive for now. Bernard going to be taken down as the EMP gets rid of that shielding. The fusion now have to play the point the whole way through. Self-destruct going to be sent over towards the spawn. <laughs> it doesn't manage to find anything over at main. We'll get back into that mech safely, though. Minefield now going to be thrown down onto the point. Second tick is picked up. They made it up to 89%, but maybe they actually can stave them off here. Which way, Cold is now shy, going to be all falling. Seems like the fusion will finally find some level of stability, but starting at two ticks with four plus minutes, this is very doable for the side of the spark. Especially when Spark, I mean, you got to look at that last fight and you say Spark had so many opening frags. Put Fusion up against the ropes there as well. Fusion just needed to survive, most importantly, survive against the grab. And the interesting thing about the grab interaction with this lineup is that there isn't a lot of easy targets to grab. You are never going to see Fusion clumped up together to get something like a three-man grab. Uh, Mano trying to get a little tricky here, but he should respawn in okay. time. This is fine. Carpet gets both supports. He will get picked off. But they still have to wait for these respawns, so obviously they'll be in position here for the fusion, so... Not too bad, I don't mind that excursion. What I was trying to get at is, if you're basically relying on Bernard to win grab, it's gonna be rough. You see, he solo grabs yeah. alive with the trances anyway, and that just ends up being a bit of a laugh as EQ or EMP strips his shields, and that's gonna be Bernard down as soon as Bernard died. I'm pretty sure the fight was over. Don't mind the little exchange and, like, two players dying either side, and what we just saw there, that'll be time exchange for all that. So Carpe drops in a pulse bomb, and Spark lose time for it. So that's going to be the value proposition being traded across. Three minutes left, there's still plenty to go, but can you match 209? Would require them to camp right now. Nano's out in a good way. He goes diving into the back. So not finding too many targets, so not even really building up towards that primal rage at all in that fight. EMP comes out, and that's going to be pretty damn massive here for the side of EQO. Rally the tanks, but the rally is rolling. They're not able to find any kills in the back end of it. So EMP now just going to be an effective reset here as the hacks wear off. Now straight back in to the fight. We go. Dead eye gonna be popped, shy for a kill, looking to zone back. We're at the main entrance though. We'll start advancing forward with the rest of his squad. He's trying to hound down Carpe. Cannot find that kill. Pulse bomb goes out from Architect. Will not manage to find any eliminations. Hoppa falling low, but alarm still waiting there. Finger on the trigger, just waiting to pop this transcendence, and he still holds on to it, even though Mono God. gets taken down to a sliver of HP. Oh. Right now, the nerves from Alarm. Non-existent. Oh, Sleep Dark connects on the Carpe though in the back line, and Shy is instantly there to punish. 
Huge pickup, but can they get themselves onto the point now? It's going to be a superior time bank no matter what for the side of the fusion at this point. But now they need to focus on trying to finish the map. Shy going to get picked off alarm. Finds that opening kill. Looks for a bit more. Throws out the Discord. Oh, Presses right up into Bernard's face. And it's Bernard. It is dying. Brent will throw down the grab, but they're only able to find no, no, EQO, no, no, no. and that's a completely disconnected fight. Gushway uses the Primal Rage. He is going to get farmed. He's trying to exit, but I don't think he's going to make it out of here. Mono thinking about crashing forward to try to roll him over. Will not manage to make it happen, but the Fusion actually win the fight. They hold on to this point. Yeah, that fight was done. I mean, Bernard used the grab when the fight was already finished there. Dies as he pulls it through. I mean, the only thing that went positive for the Spark there was the fact that they finally got Alarm's Transcendence. Is this like the most disciplined and patient Zen player in the world? Like you said, Mono and Hopper going down to very low HP. The and Alarm saving it for a rainy day. Carpe might be dead, but he'll respawn in time. No issues here. Yeah. Fusion is still in a great spot. I mean, the time is now scuffed for Spark entirely. They might have to go for an OT push. This might be a draw scenario for the Spark, and that's even if they can cap. Yeah, and that's not the position that they want to be in at all. They want this to be moving up to zero. They will find Mono. It's a nice pick up here at the beginning. Yet again, Mana Boo's going to be no using this race. Looking for a target. I'm getting Deja Vu right now. Pile <laughs> out onto Alarm. Can they finish him off the rally? Trying to keep him alive, but it's not going to be enough. Bernard will manage to beam him down to the end. Pulse Pop stick him over. Oh my Pulse god. Supports Carpe. Absolutely knocking it out of the park. Major pickup for him. And the Spark, I think they have to go for one final last ditch reset, especially with Bernard falling. They need to die. They need to reset right here, right now. But Gushway, he's still alive. And Shy is still way too far forward. He's trying to get Hoppa out of this mech, but Hoppa just dives on top of the Mega Pack, which they have hacked. Gushway now dies with 25 seconds remaining. Carpet picks up both final blows. And this is catastrophic for the Hongjo Spark. Yeah, this is looking like maybe even not a cap now oh, anymore. Man. They have ultimates coming online and Carpe is fragging. We'll see six man oh, EMP from EQO into a double pulse bomb kill on both the supports. I mean, Carpe probably heard me talking smack about Fusion not having good trace play. And my guy's been practicing in the break between Countdown Cup and now because he's looking great. Somebody's got a touch. Next guy has a touch. Okay, makes his way into the back, falls down at 38 HP. Recalls out to safety. Now they're in on to the point. Gooseway pops the primal rage, grabs a mini pack for some reason. Now needs to look to re-aggress. Architect gets in on top of EQO, takes him low, but can't get the elimination. Will force the trans location out. Hopper's not healed. Transcendence is rolled. Hoppa's not healed, as you say. He's still currently hovering around half HP. He'll move out. Looks like he wants to give up the mech, and he will to the dead eye. Chai breaks him down. The baby diva will fall. Mono going to be slept, stunned up still, however, is going to be alive. So see the rally rolling, grab comes out, and it seems like they should be able to get this cap, so it's going to be playing for a draw after all. They will not be held at point B. The Hangzhou Spark will manage to persevere, but just barely do they get this cap. Now they have to go to extra innings. Seems extra like what innings, the Spark... Like. Seems like what the Spark really needed there was an opening kill into Alarm, take the backline down, because the, the healing's been great, the damage on the backline's been great as well. Alarm's barely been pressured. This dude doesn't even have to use a transcendence if he doesn't want to. I, I can't believe he held it for so long. And th not even that one time as well. I mean, there was de there's definitely been other situations where it's just like, you know what, maybe we could just hold it further. But uh, Fusion have been defending super well. I mean, up until that last point, that was the highest value grab we could have possibly have seen from Bernard as well. And obviously, when you are in the OT, and Fusion are just dive bombing players onto the cap to try and keep it going. That's when you're going to find a high value grab because before that, what are you really going to get? And Bernard has unfortunately not had any really successful grabs up until that yeah. point. Almost surprised that he even got a grab because you need some ex you need some time to build these. Had a bit of an extended fight to get there as well. Um, I mean, Spark barely get it across the line, and hilariously as well. I mean, you saw part of the part of. The, 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 the Spark gameplay that you're seeing right now is Unano Gushray. He makes the exact same dive onto the back bridge over towards the right, except in the last dive, he saw absolutely nobody. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Two minutes and nine seconds on the clock for the fusion. Just need a single tick to tie this up. Oh, I could, I could put something out into the world right now, but maybe I won't do it because the fusion fans will absolutely murder me if I do. But uh, we'll see. So they they'll they'll be murder their own team first. That's true. Architect instantly being greeted by EQO. They cannot get the hack in. He's like, ah, I've got a mini pack to play around, but we'll get forced to relocate there in the end. Which way? Down to about half HP. We'll get top back up. I just need to set up the running for now. Ooh, you just need to be patient. You need to have players like EQO in the right position. Go for a mini pack play. 
Hugo barely getting out with his life, but so far it seems okay for the Fusion. They haven't dropped any members yet. They're not farming ultimates yet. They're not looking for anything except for an actual dive set. And while they're making that happen, Coldus nearly has a nano. When that when the nano's been achieved, Gushra's gonna receive it, and that will be the opening for the spark as well. Okay, EQO eliminated. This could be further delaying that EMP. A nice little pickup here from Shy. He's been doing his damnedest and trying to put the spark across the finish line this entire way through. Sleep Dart in, everybody collapses onto Funny Astro. The pickoffs are looking good. Mono slept, stunned, looking for that elimination. Alarm now gonna be falling on the back end. Some further stagger there. This time is bought. Time just continues to drain away. 45 it now. Must have been a mistake to put the nano to burner. He had no energy there. I mean, we switched to his POV. He's on like five energy. Yeah. Zyre with the nano. Just tickling his opponents there, even with the damage boost. Normally it would go into Gushra. I have to assume that Coldus just misfired that. So the good news is silver lining is you are going to get a faster grab instead of a faster primal rage. So once again, we'll have to see if this grab finds value. Alarm notably is going to have transcendence. I mean, why wouldn't he? Bernard's still very low. And Carpe will manage to hound him down, but it costs him his life. Architect making that a one for one trade off here. 12 seconds now remaining. The rally going to start rolling from Funny Astro. Mika still 15% away from his. Shy being pressed out into the back of the site. Now moves over, gets himself into the garage, positioned nicely here for this Deadeye. Mindfield's going to be thrown down to the entry, but EQO's going to fall. The EMP comes out, but he doesn't catch anybody. Maybe Gushra, I can't architect. really tell because the Discord over now the Transcendence is going to be rolling from Alarm. He's trying to keep things going. Mono's going to be picked off. Shy finishes him with a flashbang. The self-destruct over the top is not no going to find anything. But they actually managed to zone them off with the self-destruct long enough to get the tick. The Philadelphia Fusion will not be forced into a draw. They will tie this up one to one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, somebody, you we're on the same page here. Somebody uh, needed to go for the touch, even despite the self destruct. It has to happen. And now my mind you goes have to give back your life for it. to the nano play, where like they put the nano onto Burner. And what is the difference here? The difference is. Yeah, okay, you got a fast grab, but what does it do for you if you're relying on a grab to win? I've said this before, in this matchup, it's not going to be good enough. And Burner ends up going down, there's no grab there, uh, no healing, he's just in the middle of nowhere looking for a mega pack. I don't know if we didn't find uh, it, obviously. If Grushray had the primal, so if they nano Grushray had the primal, they have way more staying power. That is a far more effective win condition defensively for the Hangzhou Spark than otherwise. But losing Burner again, is kind of the... That's the omen that signals the end of that fight, pretty much the end of that defense. It's a 5v6, it just all starts to go awry. EMP only catches Architect there. And then I believe a, a further manual hack came in later on. But despite it not being the greatest EMP, Fusion had double support ultimates. They were set to go. They had the respawn advantage as well. It was all gone Fusion's away. And then a self-destructor put the cherry on top for the cap. Unbelievable. Uh, I just... I'm not sufficiently caffeinated to... Uh... <laughs> To, 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 to try to process what is happening right now in this series. I'm going to chug some coffee during the break, and when we come back, we'll see if anybody's going to be able to take a lead. We've got King's Row selected by the Hangzhou Sparks. We've got that to look forward to. We'll see you guys in just a few minutes. The Overwatch League is brought to you by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, we are back. We are just two maps now into this series. The Philadelphia Fusion just barely getting over the finish line there on Volskaya Industries. That was their map pick. They managed to take it away from the Hangzhou Spark, who were looking to force a draw in overtime. But they managed to get that win. So now we are tied up one-to-one -one in this first of three series. So we have at least two more maps to be played. And that is a very interesting substitution, Avril. We have Carpe being subbed out, and Shockwave is coming in. I feel like Carpe never gets subbed out. When was the I last know? time you remember Carpe being subbed out? This is like... It might be a stat a, line for us. <laughs> a, a permanent, like, starter for the fusion. He's low and there. You can't take Carpe out. Uh, the whole thing might just fall apart. Oh, yeah, I, and I think Carpe's been, you know, the probably one of the more... Alongside, obviously, Alarm, who's always good, but Carpe's been one of the more impressive players today, especially Tracer, that 2K on the support line. Beautiful stuff. Um... Very, very much a, a play that's been consistently good so far today in the play-ins. And, if, you know, if there's a day for Carpe to look really good, it's absolutely going to have to be today. EQO so far had a reasonable game on the Sombra. I will note that part of that is due to the fact that Bernard's playing Azaria. Um, and now comes my speech about how I don't think Zarya's a very good hero, and that if you're playing it right now in this matchup, it's a bit of a noob trap. I said this about Philadelphia Fusion when they played against Seoul in the Countdown Cup knockouts, where, yeah, okay, hot but look good playing Zarya, but eventually... It gets outpaced. Sombra does destroy the Zarya in the matchup here as well because you're not spy checking yeah. and you get your shields deleted by the EMP. That was what was happening to Bernard time and time again. And EQ is having a far easier time moving around the map because there is no diva to spy check that. So this is there's a few things that are going definitely the way of the fusion as well as then some just weird decisions in the Sparks lineup where, okay, when are you taking fights here? Sometimes pulling the trigger too early, sometimes pulling the trigger too late, not backing out, playing that grab as Bernard dies. Like, what's going on here? There have been some really weird things in the Spark today, especially on Volskaya. A little bit on Oasis, but definitely Volskaya in the last map. Alrighty, well, with this map pick of Kings Row, we'll have to see what the Spark have prepped for us. In all likelihood, I think that this... Uh, you know, shifting over into hybrids, some longer sight lines here. This should very much lend itself to Shy going back over onto the Ash and, you know, having that comfort there. I was kind of surprised that we didn't have it on Volskaya at all, uh, but decided to stick with the... Uh, the uh, yeah. Yeah, I think um, firing lines on A are a little bit rough for Ash. I think B is a little bit more doable, especially defensively. Um... But I'm not. You're not wrong. I think. I think if there is going to be Ash gameplay, I think King's Row is probably going to be where that comes to. There's obviously that famous clip of Shy versus Shanghai Dragons on, I believe, King's Row A, where he just deleted all the Kings, deleted all of Shanghai Dragons. Yeah. That is. That is, I think, the moment for Shy to come back in and show that Ash wants more. So there's a there's a time for it. It's now obviously Fusion to leave that because they got Shockwave back in. What is he playing? He's playing the Ash. Yeah, he is. But the, I mean, I guess the puzzling thing is that for this defensive setup, they're just going to be running Tracer, which Carpe was <laughs> showing us that he can very much continue to play at a very high level. I so have to see what you know, maybe this is going to be an attacking sided uh, uh, aspect to this for the fusion to justify this swap, maybe? I think EQO goes somber on their attack. I think the reason, so I agree with you, but I think the reason why EQO is into play the Tracer for Carpe is Ikiro's extra potential A Genji and, and B obviously the Sombra that he's playing. So that that to me yeah. would be the flexibility reason why Ikiro's still there. And Spark right, well. moving back over towards a Winston dive bomb which we've called this on the Anna, but they've finally gotten rid of that Zarya. I'm so happy. Well finally it's going to be the Hanzo coming out for Shy, so still not gonna be picking up the Ash quite yet. Yeah, they gotta counter the shield for Mars. This this yeah. does make sense for me. Just gonna be spamming away at it, forces their position, shifts them over to the side. Diving onto the high ground there from Gushway. We'll get Shield Smash for just a moment. Drops down to safety, though, as Chai continues to try to weave some arrows in. But you know, just as soon as you get rid of one shield, it seems like another one comes right back up instantly. So it hasn't gotten too much damage in yet, but they have gained nearly two ticks for free. As the fusion just... It's really rough for them to try to move down on the low ground. They finally do so, though. Mono will find Gushway. Fire nades out onto both of the tanks. That's going to force the Immortality Field, which does get cleaned up rather quickly from Bernard. But now Shy is going to be gone, so all that big potential pretty much eliminated. Architect is still slinking around somewhere, but EQO is just taking names right now. The rally's committed to the fight from Mika. 
uh, it's everything is going to be lost here realistically for the side of the spark because they get See? cleaned up. This is what I'm talking about, Achilles. They are throwing in these ultimates in a losing fight. And, you know, part of you know, people out there might say, well, you know, maybe they're trying to clutch, really. You're trying to clutch with a nano brick. Is that how you're trying to clutch here? We're then into a rally with no DPSs alive. Uh, that's yeah. not going to work. You need to save these nanos for Goose Ray. Obviously, Goose Ray dies when well, Coldus is what hit 97, 96%. Very unfortunate timing. But at that stage, just die, respawn, go again. Now they have no entry and alarm. It's just going to roll them with this uh, at Matrix. Yeah, Goose Ray can't get out. He tries to leap to safety, but we'll just get finished off. So that's just going to be a nice pulse bomb as EQO says, hey, yeah, Carpe can do it. I can do it too. Gets both the supports and a two for one special. Follows up with a nice little melee hit onto Shy. And Bernard is just, yeah, well, they show him a little bit of mercy there as they want to get set up. So they will go ahead and finish him off. But that's half the time now gone. Granted, they do still start with two ticks, but this is looking brutal. And, you know, maybe they get in the next fight. I mean, I can see a situation where, all right, this is where Shy has the Dragon Strike. They strike it directly into Mano and Hopper and Alarm. Find an opening that way. Gushay will have Prime on this fight. Looks good, right? They got to get past the mob first. Going to harass Alarm really there a little early, bit. early, actually. It is. Just keeping him zone. Okay, it's just actually going to finish off uh, Architect. Uh, Dragon Strike, not really aimed too much at them. Gets them out of Hotel, I suppose. Again, they're using... Why are they using ults here? Architect is dead. They tr they're not even engaging 5v6. It's not like they were trying to make a dive happen off the dragon while the supercharger was there and playing into it. Shy just threw a dragon strike for no reason. It does nothing. They yeah. keep throwing ultimates into the field hey. with zero value. Yeah, you don't have like a halt to try to drag them together. Bionic not going to find anything, but it will just, you know, enable some extra healing here onto Gushway. Now the Nano Boost is going to be used. He's trying to zone them out of the hall. Gets in on top of Shockwave and will manage to get that elimination. So, fortunately for them, they do find one. Self Destruct deep into the back. Hoppa just going to be using his straight up over towards the statue. He will find Coldest. That's a pickup. Immortality kill allows him to get back into the mech safely. Get rid of that. Hoppa chases in, tries to get rid of this Hanzo, and yeah, he's gonna find that elimination. Shy cannot get out to safety fast enough. Now Mika's going to fall. Funny Astro will get the dunk before. He can try to use the rally though, and Alarm's gonna be swapping over onto the Moira now. To try to get back over the point just a little bit faster, but decides to think better of it. We'll go right back over to that Baptiste. Now, Hoppa can be broken out of the mech, and it seems like this should finally be the cap coming in, surely, for the side of the Spark. And they continue to play this forward. Shockwave will enter with his own life and try and hold this. It seems like a bit of a throw now. I don't remove the bob. In fact, I don't even know where the bob is. I'm pretty sure Shockwave dies Damn. as the bob comes through, so it ends up yeah, in the late. Yeah, the animation canceled. We'll say, oh, no, there we'll it is. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, now, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. what happens is Gushui will just farm damage open to give it over to Coldus for healing. So, Bob was there, but funny enough, Bob wasn't on the point. That's the one place the Bob needs to be. So, uh, a little bit of a late attempt from Fusion. The reason why Spark can easily get that is due to the fact that both Alarm and Funny Astra fell in that last fight. Architect killing Funny Astra right at the end there. Very, very important frag as now Hong just Spike finally have ultimates to play through. See, and now you need to happens. see them layer these incorrectly in the right order. Nano first. Well, Dragon Strike works as well, but here comes the Nano. All right, Dragon Strike, not gonna find too much. Pulse bumps out from EQO, but he's gonna fall. Shy with a very nice headshot, finishes him off. Which way, however, it's a little bit too deep in there. Gets slapped, gets focus fired, get that elimination. Bionate out on the cold, just takes him down to a sliver of HP, and Mono will be able to finish him off in the end. Spots out the baby diva, says, I don't need to worry about you right now. Let's clean up the rest of the team. As Bernard takes a nice little nap. And then we'll just get domed in the end. So good little fight win here for the side of the fusion to rest control away from the spark. That was like every single one of Spark's ultimates as well, unfortunately. So they all be cleaned out almost entirely outside the primal rage, which never got played in that fight. I mean, Everyone fell very quick. I mean, even great pocketing from Hotbars on the defense matrix to make sure that Shy on the off angle of the Hanzo wasn't going to get a free kill to Alarm. Gonna break through. Where's the position back around the corner? You can see just the bubble system being utilized here by Mono, making sure that he is completely protected on that right side. Dive in comes through. It's gonna be the nano boost out on the shockwave. Just to try to keep him alive. That's all being the dive target. Bomb to the back Jeez, of Bernard. What is Real that? to find two though. Very nice angle from him. Finds Hoppa, finds Shockwave, denies the remake from the baby diva. Funny Astro will find Mika, however, as the rally is rolling, armoring up the rest of the team. Two casualties on the side of the fusion looking to rejoin. Architect now going to fall. Astro swings away. Shield goes up. He's trying to stay alive. He's trying to keep himself sustained. It seems like it's just working. Alarm keeps him topped up. 
Now they dive into the bubble. They look for the finish here on the Gushway. EQO with the chase will manage to find it. Found coldest moments before. The cleanup is going to be there. And with 10 seconds remaining, Bernard wow. will have one final stagger. And it's just absolutely brutal. They finish him off. The time will now bleed away. And I don't think anybody realistically can even touch this one. The cart there will rest. About halfway through the streets phase is as far as it needs to go for the Fusion to take this to map point. Another situation where Fusion bend but don't break. You have to give credit to Funny Astro and Alarm. What a fantastic support duo they've been so far. Keeping everybody alive, peeling for each other. You see Architect on this Reaper trying to make a backstab play, have the flank going. Zero output, really. Funny Astro in his face almost immediately. The fact that they survive after Bernard's 2k on the self-destruct is gross. Philadelphia yeah. Fusion winning that situation after being eliminated double two plays dead, including Shockwave, who had received a Nano, by the way. And I'm not a huge fan of the fact that Alarm is running an Nano in that composition where you're wondering, okay, why, why Nano Shockwave? Because there's no one else. Who else are you meant to Nano in that composition? You're not going to Nano Mano unless he's quite low on HP. <laughs> Yeah. Hopper's playing a Diva. You know, there's not great targets. There's not that Winston, you know, that's the primary target. Maybe you think about a Tracer if EQO had a Pulse Bomb. But um, they lose two, include the Nano Shockwave, and then Hopper is on. They, they still pull it back. I mean, that is clutch factor for Fusion, who are in a winning position now. I mean, that, that also a great position well, to actually hold that forever. payload. It did not get a lot of distance. All right, well, defensive setup here for the side of the Spark. Shy is going to be shifting over to the Sombra Architect on the Tracer. Not looking to have any kind of bunker. It's cold as going to show up. Show up a little lineup here. Uh, uh, huge. It's actually a really good lineup. <laughs> I'm a little upset that it only gives him 14%. I mean, it'll be worth it. As we've seen plenty of times, Coldus was only Coldus had many times in this matchup now. Only missed nano timings by about four or five percent. And Gushu just died. Remember that. So yeah. hey, fourteen percent, you'll take it. Absolutely, it's a nice little boon. Boost up there is EQO. He flashed the Genji for just a moment, but decided to go over to the Reaper. Architect kind of botching his dash there for a moment. Does barely get away without getting punished, but we get a punishment. Coldus could be the first one to fall. Alarm finds the kill. Immortality kill keeps him alive for a little bit longer. Alarm will be sustained. Funny Astro keeps him in the fight as EQO is just running over everybody. Shy gonna be the last one to fall, it would seem. That being said, Gucci now gonna jump in onto the onto the point for just a moment. But the cap is coming in. It's gonna be a massive yep. time bank, and the fusion don't have to go very far with it. Five and a half minutes. Why the hell not? And with Coldest dying first as well, I mean, the nano timing is completely ruined now. Gucci has far more ult charge, which is, I mean, that's still good. But ideally, Coldest dies last and get a faster nano here. EQO playing a Reaper is not even ideal for this comp. Part of the reason why he's even going Reaper is because it punishes Gushray so much. And so they're just thinking, look, if Spark want to force Winston more and more and more, we're going to respond with the Reaper. And that's what they're going to move forward with now as Alarm has that metrics available. You better hope that, okay, Nano has to be the play to counter this one. Otherwise, you lose all the space. Alarm's looking for the Doom window, the one that's going to finish this entire map. Okay, Hack goes out, finds Alarm, Dive comes in. Man to stay alive. Funny Astro now going to be popping the rally. The bongo going to be down on the ground. Supercharging up all that damage. Pulse Bump will go ahead and cut that short. Jump into the back Gushway, looking to move them away from this Ant Matrix. It. Almost loses his life for that, though. Just barely managed to stay alive. Self-destruct up over the top. Hopper looking for some picks. Forces them indoors, but manages to fight both supports. Mika, you've got a shield. I'm not sure what happened. Shockwave will get Architect in the skull, and that is it. This map is done. Shy is the only one left standing. The EMP will hit all six. Hooray! It's massive, but it means absolutely nothing. They blaze their way to a finish with a 4 minute 20 second remaining time bank. Philadelphia Fusion now move up to, to one in this series. Burner. Actually, nothing to do with it. I was, I was thinking back on the self destructs here. That was, that was hot, but I was right. Uh, my point was going more towards Mika and Cold this way. They, they, they've been consistently taken down quite early in these fights. Hopper dropping the 2k onto Mika and Cold this fight over straight away. There was just no ability for the Spark to re enter that fight, even with the Primal, even with the Nano. Barely got any opportunity to push the fusion off their ant matrix and yeah they only need one good ant matrix that oversees the payload and the finishing edge of that uh, box of victory and that was going to be it hopper just seals the deal slams dunk it for a victory and that was been that has now been the most dominant map of the series so far oh absolutely i mean so very one-sided there from the side of the fusion so uh incredible 
little victory. I mean, you have to remember that was the Sparks map pick. Uh, you know, they decided to bring us here. Now they have to choose again, but it's their last opportunity to do so. They cannot afford another loss. We'll see where they land on when we come back from the breaks. So don't go anywhere, guys. Fusion up 2-1. to one. one more map pushes them forward to the next series versus the Dynasty. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, we are back. King's Row, the map pick from Hangzhou Spark, ends in utter 
Devastation, the Philadelphia Fusion, close out that map in one of the most one-sided affairs that we've seen. Certainly the most one-sided affairs so far today. But now they are on their last leg. They have one final map pick to try to keep the series going. But uh, I don't know. It's not looking great, Avril. Fusion right now at match point. It's getting worse, and that's the troubling thing. It's it's concerning because Sparks started out the day very strong on Oasis. Close yeah. matchups, three sub-maps that we played, all basically going to 99s across the board. We look at then Volskaya. Okay, uh, you know, they at least cap. We go to a time bank. They can't quite survive against the time bank push coming through from Fusion. Understandable. Then we get to King's Row, and it's, oh my god, it's starting to get really bad now. We're, we're sliding yeah. down a hill. It's a landslide for Spark in terms of where the skill is, like, what's going on? They need to save this now because their season life depends on it. They have one more opportunity to bring it back around, maybe take us to a map five, maybe then get a chance to face Sol. And the winner of that goes to playoffs. There's only one team that can go to playoffs right now and fully look far stronger than the Spark do. Yeah, they absolutely do. They're very much vying for that spot in the next series where they'll have to, you know, overcome some demons, I suppose, if they can you know, close this out because... You never know what's going to happen when you get Fusion and the Dynasty together. We just know that there's going to be a lot of spaghetti to enjoy. But that's for that's a future topic. Maybe we can go to map five. Oh, I hope boy. the Hangzhou Spark can make it happen because you don't want to go out on a whimper. That's not how you want to end your season. So if they can get a map win coming in here, take us to a fifth and final round of control. I think that that would be a very satisfying ending for all parties involved. So we'll see where they're going to be taking us here for escort in just a moment. Or I'll just I could just spoil it as well. Going to Route 66. Screw it. Oh, it's just, you should just pretend you're like, oh, I, I think they might go to uh, I have no Route idea. 66, maybe. Ooh, possibly, yeah, no. possibly. I have the, the uh, lobby in front of me. I'm looking at everything. <laughs> <laughs> the it's, admin's like, you guys ready? Let me and talk. Just... <laughs> <laughs> let me let me bring up one important point for Route 66 that Spark. Sure. You might want to look at. And that is the Shy Ash. We've still not seen the Shy Ash. Please. And I'm not too sure what's going on here. Because... I know! As we kind of mentioned, King's Road probably was going to be a map. I mean, for Christ's sake, Shockwave, he brought out the Ash. <laughs> and he's he's like one of their hitscan players. Shockwave's quite flexible. He plays a lot of hitscan. If you watch his, uh, his streams, he plays... Like, Widowmaker is one of his primary heroes. So it's, that's not like a weird thing. But what is weird is that Shy is not doing it. He played the Hanzo. Again, understandable. You play the Hanzo because you're trying to counter mana yeah, on the Arisa. Makes sense. I get it. But Route 66, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's got to be the Ash map. This has got to be where, you know, Shy goes back into his carry performances because Shy's been good today. His Tracer was quite quite good, actually. But um, yeah. there hasn't been that Force of Nature style of carry play when you look at players that exist out there, especially on the MVP list. I'm talking about guys like Lip and Leave who can just exert their will upon the game and force you to win. That's what Shy was doing early in the year, and I haven't seen it yet today. Yeah, I mean, he's been, you know, fairly heavily impactful in these maps so far. You know, you'd say that he seems to kind of be like the, the one constant, I guess, for the side of the spark that they can continue to uh, depend on, but everything else has kind of been disjointed around him. But it's not been with that, that major pickup of the Ash yet. So we'll have to just wait and see. He's playing everything else other than it, but now on their last legs, I would expect to, to see him bring it up, but time will tell as we do go ahead and jump into Route 66. I mean, I'm going to be real as well. If it's not in the ash, it needs to be somewhere else. The point is, I don't know that we've seen him have that kind of superstar carry performance yet on anything. Yeah. Trace has been good. I mean, it's been good. We know him for yeah. is the Ash. Well, the I mean, we have a 75% win rate on this score maps, by the way. So, we should point out it's it's incredibly difficult when you've been casting a game for a very very long time to, to break habits. So we we know that the, there is a cowboy with no name currently in the game. So we will occasionally be saying McCree by you know in the in the heat of the moment. But it is what it is. Bear with us while we try to transition into a, a, a new term. You can call him Rudy Tooty Point Shooty Man, I guess. Shooty, shooty, I, call bang, bang. The, I call him the Shy needs to get a lot of damage done in this <laughs> era right now. Please, As God, Shy, do something, man. We are looking back over towards Bernard Zarya once again. It's not my favorite, but it'll have to do. It gives Ikiro another great matchup here, so Ikiro once more is not going to get spy checked. He's going to have a lot of fun times dropping a fatty MP all over the shields of Bernard. And Hangzhou Spark. Going to have to take a while Whoop. to charge up these nanos, and hopefully the timings are good. 
Okay, well, Twitch Ray goes in. Shy will manage to find a pick here for his squad. Gets rid of Alarm. That's going to be a very slow run back for him. So he does buy a decent amount of space. Now gets himself onto a nice little flank. Flashbang connects. Hunt was instantly greeted by that anti-nade. And that Baby Diva will get finished off as Architect goes forward, gets that melee hit. Funny Astro not going to be able to survive. And this is the kind of power that Shy has needed to be exerting this entire time. But he's doing it here in the 11th hour. Finds those opening kills. And buys quite a bit of space. Cart now rounding the final corner. Yeah, incredible damage to start things out with. Just in that small line of play as well, nearly has a dead eye. was above 10,000 damage for 10. As well as the payload is reaching the final point of A as well. And despite Gushui dying, Shy then coming up big is exactly what we need to see. Ikiwo is nearly on that EMP, and they need an opening for this defense. A lot of taking quite a bit from that fan. The hammer, Gushui now jumping into the back. EMP is going to be used solo. On to Gushui, and they will find that elimination. Carpet goes down as well. Deadeye now could it be popped. Will spawn out from Architect, not going to be able to find too much. Alarm just moving up over top of the cart, knew that he was safe. Keeps everybody alive. Now the rally's going to be rolling. We're just a meter away, so you see the slight pullback here. He's waiting for the rejoin of the whole squad. Armor going out. On to both sides. Spinar. Shifts around the back of the gas station here with the rest of his team. Pile driver only going to find Gushway, taking him up into the air. Chai falling low, but steadily get topped back up as he's the focus of that Discord orb. Grabs almost up, but Bernard, low energy. Won't find too much impact. Chai's going to get picked off. This might just be called uh, the call for an entire reset here. Oh no. No, nope. more Bernard can use it as he goes down. The second time we've seen that today, first on Volskaya, and now. On Route 66, it's a bit more of a disaster. Yeah, I mean, they just can't decide should they stay in, should they back out, is it time to disengage, or do we go ham? Bernard doesn't have enough energy, you said that already. And it's tough sometimes, you're in a 5v6 and you're thinking, can we just go in? And it gets completely ruined in terms of timing, because you lose Shy, your primary DPS, your primary source of damage, but you are just on the precipice of that grab, which is what you were waiting for. Beyond that as well, the only other things you could be waiting for are the Gushray Primal or the Coldest Nanite, which you'll have this fight, but now at the expense of not having a grab anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I... Just confusing. I mean, just so much just posturing and then getting nothing done. I guess floundering might be the best term for it there from the side of the spark, and it all just falls apart. The grab gets used. Bernard's still sticking through with it. That I now out. Shy looking for a target, Ikiro going to be forced away, but I mean the EMP is still ready, he can just come right back into the fight, the Transcendence is there, I mean it's six ultimates now available for the side of the fusion, Rally's rolling to try to survive through that anti-nade, Alarm's going to be popping the trance, keeps everybody topped up, Bernard is the first one to fall, they pile in on top of everyone, and they will die, Shy and Coldest both going to be taken out of the fight, Mika now going to be joining them in the grave, as is Gushue, and it seems like that might just be the hopes of the spark, fizzling out of existence here in this series. Cannot get the completion on to point A. The respawn's getting ready to come through. But they have to be entirely reliant on Bernard just to even touch this card. It's looking rough. Two seconds left to go. They have to rally pretty much straight away. They don't even get there. The body block, okay. It's way too late. Just for a moment there, there wasn't a lot of time left. Bernard was going for it, and he got body block. So credit to the fusion. Technically not a C9 because... Uh, while they got denied from oh, they the weren't winning that it's... fight anyway. <laughs> yeah, they. I probably not. Honestly, probably not. Fusion's defenses today have just been too solid. Look at King's Row, B hold, great stuff. Yeah. Look at this now, full hold on A. It's getting better, isn't it? Because we went from a Volskaya time bank that ended up being an OT push that won it for the spark, into then a B hold, and now into a full hold on A. So this is this has been improving gameplay from Fusion. And unfortunately, I talked about this landslide for the Spark in terms of where their gameplay is going, and it's still currently sliding down. And they I haven't just, fixed it. it, it it's looking, it, it's only looking worse. It feels like the, the Fusion are just continuously sapping the power away from the Spark. They started off so strongly. I mean, Bernard and the Diva at the beginning, we, we could did nothing but sing praises for him. He was finding picks, he was playing incredibly well. You know, had a pulse bomb meet earlier on on Oasis. And then it just, you get the look on this Zarya, you just have to say, this this ain't it. It's not even just I mean, we still have it's Shy, even now on the defense, he's still gonna play Shooty Shooty Bang Bang. 
it's not even just the Zarya. It's the combination of the fact that they are pumping resources into Goose Ray's Winston, which traditionally has been another win condition for the Spark. It just isn't today. He jumps in, he gets melted, he gets destroyed. He's not getting enough done. This is a Winston that receives all the nanos, gets all the bubbles, and can't get more done. And so, yeah, and maybe you should put maybe the reallocation of resources required here. Move Bernard away from the Zarya, because the two real pillars of Zarya gameplay is put bubbles onto the person you want to carry, and then also get energy and be carry yourself. So far, both of those things are not working for Burnout or the Spark. All right, well, looking to play some ring around the rosy. TP up onto the high ground. Shy will find that opening pick. Getting EQ with a flashbang. Ends it with a headshot, but nobody's peeling him. Cold is sitting there. He's not looking at his... Well, they don't have a okay. He's not looking at his DPS player, and then he just dies. Oh, that is just catastrophic. Now, they don't have Shy, they so don't have any supports, supports, and that just might be it right there. I mean, one final chance at a contest, but the staggers are still coming in as Hoppa cleans up too, and it seems like the Fusion are just going to be very casually gliding in to a series versus the Soul Dynasty in just a little bit here. Uh, somebody's got a touch, and I don't know who can do it. I mean, Shy is somewhat nearby, but he will have to give his life for this. Okay, Bernard will come crashing in, but instantly dies. It's just a brief little moment. Nobody else can touch. And that is it. It was, it's unfortunately the ending that I was hoping to avoid. The season will end with a whimper for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. Their road in 2021 Overwatch League ends here. The Philadelphia Fusion, however, persevere. And they have at least one series left in them as they will get ready to go up against the Seoul Dynasty. Not with a spark bang, but with a whimper. Mm -hmm. Architect comes in on the Genji for the final contest. He finishes the 2019 season as a champion with a Genji. He'll finish the 2021 season, unfortunately, not reaching the playoffs. And neither will the rest of the spark lineup either. And that includes Shy, who at one point I would have said, easy, and I have said, as, as we've both been here, was in contention for Rookie of the Year. But that started to yeah. move away when, you know, Spark's performances started sliding down. <sighs> Yeah, They had an 0-4 stage as well. Really unfortunate stuff. And now we look back on, on the Spark and say their greatest height was, I think, June Joust with a 4-0 finish yeah. they had, which then they unfortunately lost uh, the knockout game to New York, who ended up going to June Joust. And, you know, grats to New York. Good for them. But Spark, they look like the most dominant team during that stage. And they have never been able to capture that magic again since the June Joust. And now, unfortunately... Um, the way they exit uh, the entire season and the play-ins here is is a bit of a sad way. But this bodes yeah. very well for the Philadelphia Fusion as they get to now meet their old-time rivals in Seoul Dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is one hell of a series that we have on the horizon, but it's unfortunately just quite apt, I guess, for the side of the spark, you know? Bright and just, you know, that, that flash, but it lasts for just an instant. That's what spark is, and unfortunately yeah, that's just that's kind true, of the, the perfect true. summary of their 2021 season. Um, so, a flash in the pan in the June joust, and then it just kind of has fizzled out very steadily since then. But this is the end of the line for them. Fusion will get to play on. Let's go ahead and take a look at our player of the match and see who it's at. Uh, production told me, but unfortunately I didn't hear it, so I'll just learn e alongside you guys. EQO! All righty. Well, the man who has been under a bit of, you know, scrutiny from time to time. Uh, here on the side of the Philadelphia Fusion, he manages to net it for himself. Wonderful performance from him, and really, I like the musical chairs uh, rotations that the, the Philadelphia Fusion were doing here with their DPS lineup. It seemed like they knew exactly who to field at every single moment. It seems like it was never made out of desperation. Must have left Rascal's chair at home, though. To, oh, oh, That's true. For that one. But aside from that, Shock of EQO and Cardbase seem to have gotten fairly equal playtime across the board here. EQO. I think Tracer-wise actually started to look pretty decent, especially in this matchup. Oh, yeah. At the time, was one of their more dominant maps. Obviously, the Route 66 became the most dominant map. I think a lot of EQO's gameplay today was assisted by the fact that they had a great Sombra matchup in that A, there was never a Sombra on the Spark side to contest them, and B, well, very rarely was a Sombra, I should say, and B, there was never really or very rarely a D.Va to contest them either. And then obviously we saw the Reaper gameplay coming up through and um, just walking over Goose Raid, walking over Spark, completely running through them. And QO, okay, a couple of missed EMPs, but generally the gameplay was fine. The general gameplay was much improved from what we saw versus Soul Dynasty in their last showing. And now that they come up against Soul Dynasty again, he's going to need to do what he just did in this matchup, but even better. 
Yeah, I mean, the whole team is going to have to, you know, put forth just an incredible effort you would expect because, I mean, getting ready to go up against the Profits duo, um, you know, Dynasty, they have the luxury of being able to sit back, watch what the Fusion are bringing to the table, see these rotations that they're doing with their DPS lineups, and then try to play in around that for that upcoming series. But, um, yeah, I mean, really well done, whether it was on the Tracer, whether it was on the Sombra, which we saw him predominantly on, even the Reaper. When he brought out the Reaper, it was just incredibly done. You can see 25 eliminations, 25 enemies hacked. So basically, every single time you kill hack somebody, they died. <laughs> which is pretty awesome. I mean, uh, that's the other thing as well. I mean, just really good manual hacks to deliver kills over. A lot yeah. of Fusion's comps today were not centered around outside the EMP, that is. They were not centered around ultimate-based win conditions. They were ball dives, you know, Tracer in there as well. We're looking for situations where really the way for Fusion to win is they need to set up successful dives, have EQ on an off angle, find these manual hacks, get Mano in there, get Carpe in there with the Tracer, and then find these engages, right, and punish players like Ushway, yeah. who's going to be diving into the Winston, and once the bubble's gone, that's a free pick for you. So... Finding these manual hacks for EQO is uh, absolutely what needs to be happening and, again, will need to happen more so in the next match. All right, well, guys, we're going to be going to a little bit of an extended break while we allow the Fusion to cool down a little bit and then get jazzed up for their next series. That's right, they're going back-to-back -back straight into the next series versus the Soul Dynasty. This is for everything. This is for that final spot in the playoffs from the APAC region, and both teams are going to be vying for it. It's another first to three, and I'm just... Gonna say, I think I think this one's going to five. I think it might even go to six. You never really it know better. what you're gonna get it when it better. comes out of the spaghetti bowl. But boy, <laughs> am I absolutely prepared to feast on this. I hope you guys are as well. So don't go anywhere, guys. Tune back in because that is a series that you absolutely do not want to miss. Wake up your friends, wake up your family. I don't care. Get everybody tuning in because this is gonna be an insane series. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
We are back. Kind of debated myself a little bit. So excited to get into that next series. I completely forgot about our game break, so we can go ahead and break down the uh, what action there was, I suppose, in that first series. So if you're just tuning in, if you're ready for the marquee matchup, the big one to decide the final team. It's going to be moving forward into the playoffs. Have to wait just a little bit longer. Yep. But for now, let's go ahead and go back over this series. 3-1 victory for the side of the Fusion. Very rocky start for them, though. I mean, Hangzhou Spark, they looked really clean at the beginning of this. I, I would say that, in my opinion, Fusion uh, probably improved slightly over the series. But uh, for me, Spark slid off heavily over the series. That's why they were so close at the start. And when you watch over this, and part of the other reason is in this particular matchup as well on control. I think control's a better game mode for a team when, you know, you can be a bit more scrappy, a little bit more chaotic here as well. And by the way, Cold, I mean, that's one example. Cold has had a ridiculous map here. Oh, Some yeah. of the sleeps he was landing were gorgeous. And I, I remember specifically saying after all I was like, dude, there may be some concerns over a lack of skill because they they don't have MCD. He's gone. He's obviously been ejected from the roster. Uh, and Coldus was going to have some big shoes to fill in terms of skill level. And in that first map, I was like, oh, he's filled them. It's fine. You're, we're good. Like, Coldus has filled those shoes comfortably. But as the matchup goes on, we're looking at Volskaya now. Carpe finding these double pulse bomb kills on the back line. Turning fights heavily. Spark did, did themselves no favors either with... Um, one of the plays that we will remember very distinctly is, is the is the fight where Bernard dropped the grab and then dying immediately while Spark was running down. Which time? There's plenty of other players like that it happened again on... Uh, <laughs> Stop. Uh, it was a Rue 66 that happened again on yeah. Spark as well, where they had like weird plays after the first fight. Coldus and Mika dropped in Nano and uh, rally. It was Nano onto Mika, who then rallies. And then there was another subsequent fight after that where Shy just throws a Dragon Strike into nothing. So it's been a lot of that kind of stuff happening for the Spark that baffles the brain in terms of decision making. Yeah, I really appreciate seeing that replay at the very end there of that beautiful halt from Mono to pull the two back into line of sight of that self-destruct on King's yep. Row. Very w great heads-up play from him to make sure that they got those kills. And I mean, it was already a bit of a steamroll, but it made it that much flashier for the side of the fusion. But uh, there you go. I mean, unfortunate ending for the side of the Hangzhou Spark. For them and their fans, going to have to wait until the 2022 season to see them yet again. That is the end of the line. But the Fusion, they're not done yet. And guys, yeah, it is time for that extended break. It is time to get jazzed up and get ready for the Spaghetti Bowl because good God, do we have a series coming up. Soul Dynasty oh versus get the cooking. Fusion. This is going to be absolutely nuts. The water's already boiling. The pasta's just about to go in. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we come back Woo. from the break. We'll see you guys on the other side of this timer. I get what? Just run away and laugh at me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Danny, do? Is it me? Is it you? We just have different points of view. <웃음> 아, 야, 애틀 네 명의 총도 내신데? 우리 조수로 보네. 야, 우린 이럴 게 없다. 왜 그러지 않아? 왜? 애, 애틀이 1등이고, 청소도 1등이니까. 음. 그러네. 아, 안전충이네, 다. 뭐, 안전충이지? 원래 저러면 다 안전충이야. 아. Yeah, if they go, I mean, if they go ball, just tap the feet, lay down, put your mice down. I would honestly <웃음> stand up from the computer and leave. I can surf. 
not. What is it? What is respawn timer? Was it seven eight seconds? How no. do you not know it's not ten? Because the first two seconds I'm telling you. Hey, good luck, guys. Time. We're together. It. You guys got it. No, you I definitely know it's ten. That. It's like, not ten. What? It is. It's, it's not ten. ten. It is. It's not ten. It is. Oh, take the PS. Yeah, yeah. Take the PS. What's that? P T P T P. Oh. Hey, let's go. Hey, Kev, 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 Kev. You're pussy. You're pussy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> joke, joke, joke. I, I don't. Thought I thought there. 10 was like overtime. No, score. it's yeah. 10 seconds default. I swear to God. Well, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me die for a time quick. I'll yeah, let me just die real quick. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Get ball, ball, ball. We're Thank you